and there we go, two pieces. Welcome back guys, let's talk about my small hatchet that I have, or small axe or what you want to call it. This small hatchet has been in my belonging for uh, six years and uh, yeah, it's small compact, yeah it weighs more than a knife but uh, a bit more versatile uh, instead of batoning for you guys that don't like to baton with your knife. And it goes a bit quicker with this one, I admit. So, which one is it? It's my Grensforsbruks uh, small wilderness axe, I, t I think they called it. Uh, there we have it, with a really nice sheath in leather. Yeah, really good small hatchet, feels really good in the hand, you can really choke up on this. You can use it for smaller tasks, you can use it to chop off limbs like this and also split wood about this diameter, a bit bigger also. Uh, one thing to know about when you're carrying an axe or hatchet with you that uh, I would recommend you to practice first how to use it because it's when you slip with this one or something like that the injury is going to be so much bigger due to the impact you're going to have with it and the weight so yeah be really careful when you're using your hatchet or axe I must admit that I'm not the best one to use one and it was close yesterday to a small accident but I survived. When I use a small hatchet or knife or something like that sometimes I like to use gloves so my hand don't get hot spots and get fatigued so much so I find it comfortable using a small glove or something like that for when I'm working with my hatchet. Mostly when the hatchet, uh, sometimes with the knife for bigger tasks like chopping or batoning or something like that. So it's perfect for taking off small branches like this. So, one tip may be to stand on the opposite side of the wood you're chopping your limbs so you don't chop yourself. Dangerous. Could go through against my leg if I had a leg there. So here we have a few pieces to split down. Yes, I was telling you I'm no expert on using a small hatchet or axe. And uh, if you want more tips and tricks and safety use about this, don't listen to me because uh, I'm no, uh, how you call it? I'm maybe not the best example for safety tips but I always try to have it in my mind what I'm doing uh, what I'm working with and uh, how is the safest handling of my tool that's important when you handling sharp or dangerous object or tools that can harm you and your trip will be over so Usually what I do, if I have a stump like this, you can, if you want to be extra careful, go down on your knee and do it like this and try to have your piece over there 
So if you do slip, maybe you go here, but not here. And fully extended arms, because if I have here my piece and go and slip, could be dangerous. So what I try to do is have my piece over there, if I want to go down on my knees and just chop it down like that. When you feel secured or safe, you can do it with full power. Otherwise, take it easy and you can just baton the last bit with another piece. So once again, full extended arms and down like that. You see, I slipped towards me. If it had slipped all the way, it would have hit here, not here. So extending. If I'm stuck like this, you can try to batong it. Like that. To go through. Be careful because when it's softer metal, over here, if it's soft, you can open your eyelid, or how it call it, and loosen up. So they don't recommend that you batong it like that. This is like this, shouldn't be any problem for you. Doing it standing up, that's a bit more tricky. Because if you do slip, you can hit your knee, your leg. You can always do it like sideways, I don't know that's so good like this or really apart you have standing with really, really apart but if I do slip to the side I potentially could hit my leg but as I was telling you don't listen to all thing all the things I said you can take some tips, but I could be wrong. Really windy today. Here we have another splitting technique you can use also. Just put your piece like that. And grab the both pieces like this and just go down hitting the piece like that and then you can twist it like this and there we go two pieces let's do some small feathers with it shouldn't be any problem You get the point. You can do small feather sticks with it if, if you want to get your fire going. The only thing you don't have any 90 degree on your small hatchet so if you wanted you could maybe do it over here so you have that corner with a 90 degree. If you want to start your fire with your small hatchet also. Never have any issues with this small hatchet or axe what would you call it an axe or a hatchet what is the difference in my world they have told me that a hatchet is something small you carry with you and an axe is the bigger one that's more bulkier more for splitting and chopping down trees I don't know Tell me what's correct, guys. Small feather sticks. Or feather making, or what you want to call it. That's what, what's just a small demonstration of my small hatchet from Grenzorch Books, the wil uh, wilderness sex, wildlife hatchet. I don't know what they call it, but. It's the small one. I think the head weighs like 600 grams and yeah, really nice. It was about time I did a video on this one because I have 
had it for so long and almost forgot about it and how much I really like it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy and my conclusion of this one is it's a really small good hatchet to carry with you if you don't want to bring a bigger one. As you can see pieces are around 4 to 5 inches no problem 10 to 12 centimeters something like that and obviously you can do feather sticks with it you can do fine task small car uh, small carving sadly enough uh, it has gone up in price really much from the time I bought it so uh, if you want to get one of those uh, you need to be ready to pay up but they are really nice made handmade no problem doing my small firewood with it splitting it up just want to point out once again be careful because even a small one like this can do big damage